McClunky. McClunky. I'm not saying that. I'm mad. Yeah, I'm mad. Yes, 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 you you might have an intro. You ruined that I'm, one, bro. I'm God mad at damn it, Cass. How did I ruin that it. one? <laughs> you Which is that you've done and you said I ruined it. Not to give oh. too much of a pre-show to this one, but Kaz just got us with the, the I don't even know, the A-OK hand? Like, what do you call that? It's uh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> it's the OK. <laughs> got, me, got me so bad. <laughs> you had oh, everyone. You like still like nah. Let me look at this. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't jump into other this discords and stop this man from doing this. <laughs> yeah, no, I would. Yeah, like I was. I went to like the top down tabletop Discord, and like, you guys want to see some cool. And Sam Jade like, no, don't look at it. So <laughs> everyone looked. <laughs> everyone looked, of course, because like they thought it was like embarrassing from me. And I'm like, no, I'm you, coming here with I genuine... So I, I thought... <laughs> like, I just want to save you people from this. I'm sorry. Huh. Nah. Anyway. Got welcome to our episode 11 and or stream discussion, everybody. McClunky! Yeah, thank you, Richard. <laughs> I'm joined by my friends and squad mates. I believe the word you're looking for is... Colleague? Wow. Sorry, I just got that. demoted, dude. Oh no, I was, I was oh, going to say, best man, fuck's sake. Oh. That goes to the, the toilet. Not to <laughs> too much into the background jokes that we've had today, but like, that goes to the toilet. No, nah, no, nah, lis listen to this guy. That goes Basically. to the toilet. Yeah, li listen to this bullshit, Richard and Dan. So, like, me and Sam and AJ and Connor have been arguing about being Sam's best friend. Or best man. <laughs> <laughs> and You're like, all wrong. You're all wrong. No, 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 I yeah, you... you myself. No, 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 no! You wait. Cricket's a racist. We don't. We don't put cricket in the conversation. <laughs> but as I was saying, he has weird tendencies. Like, it's true. He does. He's a ra absolute racist gremlin. I've seen it firsthand on streams, so I can't. Really I've seen it in person. It's awful. Yeah, I know. I bet. But basically, <laughs> basically, I was trying to watch the thing with Sam and AJ, and then Cricket comes along, sees me inside, and starts barking at us. Bro, she's just Filipino, and I'm Indian. He barks like, at everybody. But, yeah, but, yeah, like, but he, like, he, he, he didn't get chill with me. He, he barked at me and Sam, but then like chilled out after like a couple minutes, you know? But then whenever he saw Kaz and Sai, he would continually bark. But this who's man's Sam's complexion? best friend? Oh yeah, let's get to this. Uh, basically, and hmm. then we're like arguing about who's his gonna be his best mate, uh, I mean best best man at his wedding. And like and then like, we were also talking about like shitting and like uh, toilets and stuff. Um, like so, like, it, was, it was two conversations <laughs> naturally. In one, yeah, no, it was like it was like I was surprised with how like how in depth this conversation went. But like uh -huh. basically, we, we got we got we got we got to like the point where like Sam was like, you know, it, it ain't Connor, like because we always thought it was me Connor, because like we, and like we were like, no, Connor don't deserve it. I deserve it. And then H.E. would say the same thing. Um, and there's like, no, 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 me and that toilet are closer than anything. <laughs> toilet seat is going to be my best man. That, to that you know, toilet has seen more of me than any of you. The crazy thing about that story is that it reminds me of a, another story. Uh, it reminds me of this story called Star Wars Andor. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's absolute Richard. fucking shit. No, I'm sorry, I'm joking. Somebody's got to keep this train on the tracks, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I see what you did there, seeing as your last Dini session was on a train. Hey, very slick, very slick off of the train. Very finally, slick, like, <laughs> like shit. Slicker oh. than shit. <laughs> like Andor. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the best like quote to describe the slope of the show slicker than yep. shit slicker than shit <laughs> I, I like that classic minute of us i've been going back forth about shit and trying to talk about it <laughs> this show is so confusing I, I i i've never hated and loved a show so much <laughs> so no okay that brings okay because me and Kaz, we watched we watched the episode just a few hours ago and we both came to the conclusion that I like this episode a lot. Like, I think this episode is one Yeah, not of my, me. Like, Just uh, we ones. came to the conclusion Sam liked the episode. <laughs> liked the episode? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, like, was, uh, yeah, I actually did like the episode. Total snooze fest until the very end. Yeah, exactly what yeah, I was going to say. I almost didn't <laughs> like that scene at the end. Like, I felt like that was, like, almost, like, them being like, we have to throw, like, an action scene in this to, like... Because Make, they knew dude, it was that fucking was... boring the entire time. Ah, like it was like... And that was a really, really cool action sequence. Like, it was okay. Are you crazy? His oh, I want to choke you the screen, cool. man. 
<laughs> but yeah, the, the entire time, I was like, I... So boring, man. Like, I don't know. Yeah, this this one... This was the first episode where I was like... I put it on, on like, a different monitor while I was working, and I was like... I had to keep scrubbing backwards because I was, like, missing stuff. And I'm like, ah, shit, I should probably pay attention. This whole episode... To be fair, like, that's how I watch this. Like, I watch this show, like, as, like, just, like, background noise, but, like, they'll be, like, I'll, like, look at things. Like, 2Z2, for example... Those two. Yeah. What, what was the race called? So, uh, well, it's whatever the planet is, right? Like uh, uh, Nar- Narkinians or something like that. Oh, I liked the sad Narkinia, and also like yeah, the Narkinians were like fun. And where, I, where I actually read the two aliens Narkinian. that show up to like capture Andor and Mel- and Melshi, like at the, oh, at the like the little beginning. like flesh pirates or whatever they yeah, were. Like, <laughs> they were I, they were like fleshy boys. I liked that yeah. because it was a little bit of that pulpy They're Star bubbles. Wars stuff that we've been oh, missing it's great. in the whole show. Like I liked those guys a lot in that in that opening bit. They're fucking gross as wet nets. What the hell is that? <laughs> they look like yeah. Spider Man's, like like the most cartoony rendition of a Spider Man <laughs> yeah. like catching thing. You know, I, like honestly, I loved it, it, but like when I saw it, I was like. What the fuck? <laughs> this is like the most un-Star Wars thing I've ever seen in my life. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I like that they talked like pirates and like, I don't know what, like, was one of them supposed to be like an idiot? Like a <laughs> robot? Or like, what what was up with his, I don't know. I I, I didn't care. It was awesome. I, I loved it. <laughs> uh, one of them was, okay, so like, actually on that note, like, this is kind of confusing a little bit. And I don't think this is meant to be what this is. Uh, one of the aliens might not be a Narkinian. He might just be from another place. And the one that you're talking about that is like robotic ish and had the hand thing, he might be the actual Narkinian. That's like a little bit of a thing going around because the race of the other guy is something seen in Rogue One and is already like characterized as something else. But they might not give a shit. So, like, that's a little bit of yeah, a Yeah, whatever. They, look, they were cool. I, I liked them. them. They, were, they were little <clears throat> pirate dudes. I liked that they talked like pirates. One even had like the blade hand. Two Z2. They looked like, mm-hmm. uh, like Futurama characters to me, and I loved every bit of yeah. them. I was gonna say I, I felt a few trauma vibes from them too. Mm-hmm. I loved like very, the tension cool. that they were building in the scene the whole time, where it was like you couldn't really yeah. understand like their vibe, so you just we all just were like, oh, they're trying to fucking kill them and like sell them for the money, but it was like, no, we actually just hate these guys. So yeah, but, I mean, I like when them. they g- they got smacked by the uh, um, the wet ropes, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well, I was like, where's this mic for that man? I just had to emphasize that the ropes were the wet. Ropes. Wet. They were like wet and webby. Wet, wet they and were gross. gross. Yeah. And white. <laughs> oh. I feel like I know what you're getting at, and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna stop so it doesn't get blocked on YouTube or something. Jesus. <laughs> we already struggled with that I, uh, enough. This, this. Do we actually have flagged with shit? No, we don't. So no, we not, yet. Not, not yet, at least. <laughs> it's yeah, not it's big enough to get flagged yet. So uh, we have a little bit of leeway right now until until this comes back ten years from until now. Until the get big canceled. man comes down on us. Uh, right. Yeah. Until in ten years' time, we've all got to put individual videos up apologizing, like yeah. Yeah, this <laughs> crying. We're uh, uh, hi. Person, mate, we're man. McClunky Corporate, and we would like to say <laughs> we're sorry. We're sorry. <laughs> we're sorry. What we said wasn't real cash money. And it also cost us cash money, but you know what? We're better people now. <laughs> you know, this episode had me uh, kind of a, a little bit of a tearjerker in the beginning. I didn't give a shit about Andor's mom, but that droid, though. That Boy. droid is yeah, really oh like, bad. B2 Emo's like, vibe in this whole mm. thing is like another thing entirely. I love B2 Emo. That's why he's on the goddamn cover here. Like, even though we I, haven't seen a whole I lot of I have so many questions him. about, and I, I've always questioned this stuff, but, but like the, the level of sentience within droids in Star Wars is, is nebulous, and I love it. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, I felt the entire time like, this is a, this is a droid, and it's, it's depressed. Yeah, is <laughs> like, this guy feeling? Yeah. Thanks it, for it, subscribing, I, I, by the way, Nolan Creed, not to cut you off, but thank you for the subscription. I love you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Nolan. Nolan Creed. Thanks, yeah, the uh, the the droid I got like like sad like dog vibes from. Like mm. it's a dog whose owner just died. Like I felt so it even has like a little doggy bed. Like, mm-hmm. I felt so bad it, for the thing. Wow, they really have like pushed a, into that. That's great. Imagine if your dog could talk to you and it had like an adorable stutter. <laughs> you know, like how how depressing would that be if you got to listen to your dog? be all sad and shit <laughs> like it's oh my goodness i must admit the one thing that star wars has always nailed is proving that sometimes the machines are more human than the humans yeah like i was especially reading a, with a thing. this little section sorry to cut you off Rich. no no, no you're um right. but like especially with considering where this is set in the time period as well where the isbr aren't really acting 
off of human instinct, they're almost kind of they're, they're going beyond that, aren't they? They're, they're almost being monstrous in themselves. <clears throat> yeah. To see a droid show more human characteristics kind of just puts into perspective how shitty the situation truly is. Yeah, and I don't I don't know how canon this is, um, but I was reading that in Star Wars, droids gain sentience as they age, and that's why they have to mind wipe them. So, like, that's the longer sad. a droid goes, I know, yeah. right? Isn't that screwed up? Like, that's, the longer a droid goes awful. without being mind wiped, the more sentience it, it gains. That's why Would I like R2 That explains why C3PO so. and stuff like that. Is, yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, cool stuff, though. It's, I love it's, yeah. It makes you think about, like, the, I guess, like, the moral implications of mind wiping a droid. You know? I guess that makes sense. This is sense. a sentient creature right now. Yeah. <clears throat> You guys remember that scene from Rise of Skywalker where uh, C-3PO has to have his, like, memory wiped? And then yeah. gives it back? Yeah, yeah. fuck that. <laughs> uh, but, like, in the, yeah, but I didn't know that was going to happen, did I? Huh? <laughs> uh, like, but initially when he's like, yeah, just do what you got to do, uh, if it means we're going to win, it kind of makes, I, I know it's a shit film, but it makes that scene a little bit more, like, especially what you said, Rich, that kind of makes it a bit more, ah, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Like if they had committed to that, I would have been actually probably pretty sad. But yeah, for yeah, me. yeah. Well, maybe because like I don't know because like that whole scene was kind of mixed because like he said like I just want to make one la take one last look at my friends, and I'm like, dude, all but these people in this movie have been fucking roasting you and hate you. He's been laughing. And then R two's R two's just like, don't worry, I got a backup, guys. He doesn't even know these people. Yeah, like they're not even they're not his friends at all. He's met them for like an hour. You're nobody to me. Chewbacca. There's a bunch of fucking people that hang out with me, just in shit well, on that's me all the, the time. That's the thing about the, the sequels is like I don't know what the fucking time frame is. Like yeah, it's, apparently years went by at that point. No, nah, it's just one year. One year. So it's one year. Oh fuck that then. So like a week, or not even a week. Like a day went by between the first and second movie, and then a year. So it's not even like no characters could have had the time frame to get connected. Is the thing. Mm, Not yeah, like they yeah. did in the original trilogy, goddamn. They put like three years between those movies. Yeah. Yeah, I liked I, how like time passed that way. I think That's with, uh, with storytelling. Yeah, good storytelling, right? Yeah. I think um that the Andor's mom passing away was like I, I know that they, they obviously put the droid in there to like, you know, tug at your heartstrings a little bit, but like the mom dying meant nothing to me. Yeah, because I just really I don't care. I, don't I only I got kidding. sad when like I realized that she was dead. And, like like the the way it affected the droid. Yeah, yeah exactly. the droid is what really sells it. It's not that. She's I wonder dead. how intentional that is. Like, did they think that the they they intended bad. on making the droid the real sad part, or do you think that like that was an unintentional side effect of Which not writing out the mom? Film. It's very well. never unintentional. <laughs> it's like you should know, man. A lot of the now. stuff the fans Poetry. make up, like a lot of it is unintentional, apparently, right? <laughs> yeah. I think that, like, we could be looking at it like that, but I think that they wanted this to be a little bit more impactful. I think mm -hmm. to make it more impactful, if I'm being honest, Marvel should have died doing something rebellious. That's my thing, but yeah, I she thought, died on I screen. She was gonna, I uh, yeah, she was gonna do a uh, kill this uh, old lady like, on screen, man. <laughs> I, I thought she was going to go and, like, blow up the hotel or something. Like, I thought that was where she was going. Yeah, with, right? Like, That's, her mentality. Yeah, do anything. She just she said she's going to be a rebel, and then she dies between episodes. <laughs> like, are yeah. you kidding me? <laughs> it's kind of, you know, uh, how do I put it? Bad writing. Um, well, she literally only <laughs> dies to get Andor back to Ferex. Like, that's the whole thing, obviously. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's sorry, the thing with, like, like, I'll... Sorry, Ron. No, 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 you can fight, mate. No, I was gonna say like when you're coming about bad writing, like that's like my issue. Like I feel a lot of Andor is just plagued with bad writing and bad just pacing. I think pacing more than writing. I I think that it's. Well, I I would argue like they go me. both hand in hand. True. Like, would you not? I, I I no, I agree with you. I think that it's it's pretty obvious to me that this show had a, had a pretty good script written out, which is miraculous these days, mm. and uh. that it, it's it's been squashed so much since they cut so many of the other seasons out. That it ruins the pacing and and thus ruins some of the writing. Like this yeah. character, the mom character was probably supposed to be something more. They just had to cut it out. And now that droid is being too emo. <laughs> See, but like at the <laughs> same <laughs> time, like from what we know about the show and like how they're planning it, like apparently this season like is pretty much the same from like all the planning really? that they had to do. Like this se this season is what was aimed for, but then season two is the one that you're gonna probably feel a lot of whiplash on because that gotcha, one apparently gotcha. is gonna move. Like I think like like Sam brought it up with like the um 
like all those flashback scenes in the beginning with his sister. Like he's done. Why are like are, like I don't feel like any of it's relevant. I they should have either yeah. like, just had that. For yeah, the they're going back to that story. Yeah, yeah like, like is sister? that gonna, we have one more episode this season? Is that going to be a thing throughout season two, or like are we finishing that? Are we gonna learn that like Cinta or whatever like that chick's name is actually like her, her, what her, her, what her, they've her done sister. there is like you know in Game of Thrones where they show the White Walkers in like episode one. That's what yeah. that's what that is. Yeah, <laughs> we're mm-hmm. gonna see him in episode in season uh, three, and then they have a really anticlimactic one one session uh, episode. In season seven or eight, people are theorizing that like the sister is already in the show as like other random characters, right? Like Cinta is one of those people, and like even oh, we're gonna find out that he's actually related to Mon Mothma. <laughs> even the girl running the store for with Luthen, people think that that might be his sister, which I don't, I don't know. I think that would be ridiculous. Too freaking connected. I, I wouldn't like it on that front. I think he should just find her if they're gonna do it. Yeah, just make it a random person. Why she needs to be a character? Yeah. Like who, yeah, who cares? I mean, really though, yeah. Like, because like as we've seen that entire plot line is kind of fizzled. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it, means <laughs> it mattered in like, the first two episodes, and now it's just gone. Even then, even when it was happening, it's like, what is this? I, I don't care about this. <laughs> yeah. Well, for season two, obviously, this is all in one year. This this season. Yeah. Uh, and then next season, like every two episodes of the year. Like every two, three episodes. Yeah, then they're going to do their three episode arc thing, and it's all going to be like different years leading up to like uh, Rogue One. Rogue One. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty whiplashy, I feel, comparatively to what we're getting here. Like the slow burn yeah. show, then contrasted with a season two that is just relentlessly moving. Like, I don't know. Especially, and like, I know that there's, you know, there's nothing you can really do about this. Time is a thing, but like, Diego Luna has clearly aged since Rogue One. Yeah. Like, it's noticeable. Well, that's how Star Wars works, man. It's like reverse aging. And... Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Benjamin Bunn. Bun. Like seven years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Just like how in, uh, in, in uh, Obi-Wan's show, you know, when they did flashbacks of, of Anakin, he was super old. Yeah, that was awkward. That was a really awkward <laughs> time. Uh, yeah, o- old mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I would be weird, cool so. with it, but I was like, oh, wow, you can really tell. Oh, wow. Oh. The difference is that that's 20 years difference not six <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I feel like uh beyond i will i will say even though i didn't really care about the mom dying i as you guys know i'm a big fan of like the little bits of lore like i, I loved how on that planet they like make people into bricks and put them in a wall yeah i love that, I love that, that little was bit cool. of building that was really good yeah it was that's, that's just cool them. stuff it's like, neat they didn't need to put that in but they did and i liked it yeah like even with like the whole daughters of ferrix concept thing i think that that's just like a cool little bit to keep referencing and I, I think it's obviously all building towards something where next episode we're going to see this whole we're going to see pretty much an, another episode three where all of Ferrix kind of comes together against the Empire yeah. I'd say so I think I said in in the first um the first podcast for Andor that I really liked how there was just buildings made out of brick and I, I liked how in this episode they established that like the bricks mean something too so, yeah like those are all dead neat. people yeah that's wild by the way. So when they blow up buildings, it's a bit more personal than just bricks and mortar. Yeah, that is mm-hmm. pretty sad, actually, now you say that. That's, that's beautiful. Really neat. Um, beyond that, though, uh, pretty much from the moment that we got to see Sad Droid up until um, the uh, the tractor beam scene, I, it's, it's all just kind of a blur in my head. I don't even remember yeah. what happened. It was a lot of <laughs> fucking Mon Mothma talking and shit. And... What was up with that religion thing? Which one is is what that is, like a, a, a callback to something else? I don't. I'm not sure what are that you was. Talking about like with Mon Mothma with the their Chandra yeah. cultures. I think that uh, what 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 are you specifically referring refer, referencing? So I don't know what that like what. So it's, it's Mothma's daughter's like religion or whatever. I've never seen that. I'm not mm. sure. What oh that's yeah, supposed to be. fucking chanting. Yeah, like what? Do you guys know if that's like a reference to something? I've never heard of anything like that in Star Wars. Uh, not necessarily. I just think that that's just like showing like Chandril and like customs and stuff like that. And like, because the whole scene, cool. like they were talking about how like she is like way more into like Chandril and customs than like even like most people that Mon Mothma does, yeah. right? And apparently like the customs are felt more on Coruscant even now than they are on, on Chandril. Gotcha. So. I actually liked it a lot. I thought it was really cool because it's very rare that you see anything related to religion in Star Wars. So I thought it was a cool scene. I just wasn't sure if it was a callback to something else because they they kind of went a little bit more into it than I expected. 
I mean, Andrew's done like you're supposed to know. True. Because we had those people from uh, Aldani, yeah. Aldani, yeah. Was that the was that the planet? I think it was. I think it, yeah. Yeah, like I like the I like the in depth like looks into like the different cultures and stuff like that occasionally. Uh, I like the way that even the because it's being used in a cool way with the Mon Mothma situation in general. Where last episode, her meeting with the guy, you kind of realize like Leda would totally do it. Like she would be into it, but like it's not what Mon Mothma thinks she really wants. You know what I mean? Like I do like that Mm -hmm. inner that inner turmoil going on. But other than that, Mon Mothma. Make your scenes a little bit more uh, interesting, please. <laughs> get get this woman off the couch. <laughs> yeah, like get this woman outside for God's sake. She's, she's been inside his room every, for days. Every scene with her is her sitting on a lounge or something, just, just relaxing and looking like sad. <laughs> like that's every scene with her. Are like, you even, a fucking banker or some shit? Yeah, like, even this week, like it kind of made it more apparent to me. I'm like, well, shit, we're like one step away from solving this goddamn problem. So easily that it's like why is this even a big problem like the the rebels problem is communication right now because yeah. Ethan is sitting on 80 million credits and she only needs five hundred thousand credits to like even this all out just give her some because if you if, if that doesn't happen you're fucked too then luthan i think like yeah I, I had a hard time understanding help. that entire that entire bit where she's describing like the debt that she's gotten i'm just like why is this a problem yeah like we we sh- we saw in the first couple of episodes that you guys stole a shitload of money. Why yeah, is what this the hell problem? was the point of the fucking Aldani shit then, anyway? Right. <laughs> it's apparently it's, Luthen just is just holding it close to the chest and being like, we're going to use this when we need it. It's like, well, this is kind That's of the time well, you this need when it. you need it. Like, cause if, if Mothma goes down, so so too does Luthen. That's just... Because he even mentions later on when he's talking to uh, Saw Gerrera that, like, like, people can't know him, you know? Which so, that like, to me was probably the best scene this whole episode. Like that's that's where I lo- was in. I like that. Yeah, I enjoyed the Saga that. scene a lot. I, I like any time that those two actors are together because they're both just chewing the scenery. It's it's so good. Um, but it's I, I don't know. It's, it just seems weird. Like Luthen very clearly doesn't want people to go down if they know who he is because they can talk. Well, Mothman knows who he is, and she's in deep shit, and he can solve this problem very easily, probably even without the heist money because he's already rich. Yeah. True. Yeah. Like, why is this a problem? I don't get it. And I hate the mob like, really... Damn it! <laughs> it's going to be really like easily solved next week. And if it isn't, then I'm like, they're really holding this plot line for next season. Like, that's ridiculous. One thing I'm I'm yeah. kind of excited for though. Next episode is the return of that fucking bumbling sergeant. Is oh, he yeah. Maybe. Like, I hope so. Because the, like, the fucking the phone, we'll idiot tag team. I don't think he's. Gonna, I don't think he's gonna come back. Yeah. I think that honestly, it's Kobe just gonna be. Uh, yeah, just for you. You think it's just gonna be what's his face talking to his mom for, uh, over cereal again? <laughs> no, no, no. He's, he, in the episode, he left. Like he I, I know, I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, like, I he, but I don't think he's, he's gonna my go favorite pick character. Up that other guy. I think he's just gonna go straight to Ferrex. Well, yeah. I he's, think he's he might... my favorite character too. But I because like he, they, they he were, needs to get out of the house. He was saying, "No, his like, mom is my favorite." Like character. His, the fucking sergeant was. <laughs> <laughs> very specifically saying where he is right now, so maybe he might go to the sergeant first. Yeah, because like I, just going back to like the pacing thing, like like uh uh what's his name? Uh, Cyril. Cyril, uh, that's what it is. Yeah, Cyril. Cyril. Cyril is is uh is probably my favorite character in the show, and I love his motivation and his his character development. But it's like, oh my god, he's been at home with his mom for four episodes now. That's why I'm like, saying. Can man. We he was, he was just so move strong him forward, in the first please. Three episodes, I felt like he was actually doing shit, and it was cool. Like we're seeing some yeah, cool well, things, and now it's, it's like too I said much, last episode. Like this show feels so disconnected from itself. Like the first three episodes, the next three episodes, and then these feel like completely different shows. They don't feel connected. They, I mean, they barely feel connected. The only real connecting throughway line is is Andor himself, who nobody cares about, and uh, Cyril, who has done nothing. Yeah, Andor was and, barely and then, in this episode too. He got fucking gooed and then went back to Miami. Yeah, and like Mothma's part of the show f- for some reason. It's a plot line that's just not going anywhere. Uh, I, 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 I was so excited for her originally in the show, honestly, and like I was not, and I'm, I'm even more disappointed now. And seeing like her, what, what they've done with her, it's like fucking. What the hell were you thinking? I yeah, do have a theory sure. about Mothma and Luthen, though. You uh, think, uh, think that they're think that they're gonna give birth to a, a you a ship jet- it? They're no, gonna give no, birth no. To I Akbar? think they are. 
Lord and a Sith Apprentice. Maybe. Oh. I, I think it's I mean, a you saw more... Luton's got Darth Vader. I mean, Darth Maul's lightsaber. True. Built into his ship and everything. Um, I, I have... So obviously, you guys were saying about why doesn't he just give her the money. Uh-huh. I have a very horrible suspicion that the reason he won't is he wants to see for himself that she'll, she is willing to get her hands dirty for the cause. Uh, and the huh. fact that week in, week out, we are seeing that she is more and more trapped it is now forcing her into that position of she is going to have to do something big to get herself out of this. Mm. And I think Luthen can sense. see this. That fits and Luthen is in a way, he's like, right, I've got Saul Guerrero in my pocket. I've got him on my side. We know that Krieger's going to go. We, we can't save him. But what is Mothman now going to do to help us achieve the cause? She needs to then step up to the table like we have stepped up. How can we do this? Let her struggle. Let her get desperate. Let her get to a point in which she has to stoop to our level so that we are now equal, so we can go forward. That's that sort of how I've, I can that's see how that. I've taken it. I, that's how I've taken it like, as it's come. Because like you new... say, at any point, he can just give her the money, and no one would question it. But that would be too easy. It's very much like it gives me reminds me of the parallels we were talking about. Like, oh, like I remember me and Sam were like mentioning how like that like marriage uh, situation with her daughter, like that could like cause a, a, a issue in the way she wants to go about business. Mm-hmm. And so like there's like she's basically yeah she's just getting cornered either by like this this banker uh, that was in like I was he in the beginning of this episode Maybe as well I can't remember. Yeah, because I remember using last time I wasn't. I might need to recap. And I had like with his daughter, her daughter being more like inclined with like the um, the culture and stuff. The um, what was it? Like she, she likely will go along with the the proposal. Yeah, and yeah. that will make her owe the banker, and she doesn't want to. And like clearly, she doesn't want to owe anyone. And then like yeah, I think I with still, Luton, it's I like she doesn't care. I care more yeah. about. I, I cared more about the wet ropes. Than I yeah, do about no, like it's not. It's not. Part I care. It's not. Part I have any interest in. Like yeah. I think. Like honestly, the only like the only like story in this that like interests me is, um, is what Cyril or Cyril, what the fuck his name is. I don't even know his name. Cyril. Cyril. Yeah. Dude, Cyril is my purpose. Oh my god. <laughs> Cyril yeah. is my favorite character. I, I care about Cyril and I care about Luthen. I, w- I just want to know what what's Luthen's deal. Like, what was that thing that they pulled out of his pocket? Oh, sure. That was a lightsaber. It's a lightsaber. Says everyone on the fucking internet. I hope if if he's a fucking Jedi, people, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel the same way. I keep expecting him to be a Jedi, but I I really hope they don't do that. Wouldn't I, make sense for me. Like, I don't know. He's actually a Jedi master. Yeah, it's like, and how is no one, I mean, I get that, like, they all forgot, but, like, fuck me, dude. Like, you can't just be, like, a popular artist dude selling shit like that and be, like, a Jedi, I think. I On think course, more likely that someone would, like, sense you, Someone right? would goddamn be like, that's a Jedi. That's well, a I fuck- think it's, I think it's possible that he could just have a lightsaber and yeah, not be a sure. Jedi. It made an excellent addition to his collection. That would right. make sense to me. Uh, yeah, but if you if he That's, turns out to okay, be that was sensitive, also, I'm pissed. Uh, A1 reference, by the way. <laughs> that, that almost slipped right by me, but I caught it. I caught that one, sir. I what caught was it midair. What did you say? I missed it. An I excellent recorded. addition to his collection? Oh, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Kenobi! <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, okay. The tractor bean. The tractor bean... That yeah. Luthen ship has become, I think, my favorite ship in Star Wars. It was cool. That was, that was fucking so awesome. cool. I loved that scene. I loved all the sh- the, the stuff. How his his ship just shot like like looks like junk. It became a lightsaber. To oh, break. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Just shot a bunch of like tractor fucking beam. shit it did, at it the shot tractor lasers beam. out of the sides. How the wings folded in to create like shields. So cool. It, it was, was awesome. so cool. And I like that his ship is like he's got all these really cool additions to it, but they're very clearly modifications to an existing just po dunk, you know, merchant sh- sh- like vessel. You know, yeah. he just made modifications because he's rich and he can do that. Maybe this is where that eighty million or, or that all all those credits went. So he's like Mothma, sorry man, I, I <laughs> tricked out my Fondor man. He like, used it to pimp his ride. <laughs> sorry, I got no money on me, and then drives away in his fucking limo. <laughs> <laughs> Just spent all the money on this bad boy. 
But yeah, well, I'll, I'll agree that like the action. Exhibit. It's all good. Uh, the action in the scene was was good. I just felt like like with what I was saying earlier, like, I, it literally just felt like a thing that threw in the episode to be like people are probably bored. Like I, I agree that like with what you guys are saying, it was definitely like a more like slow, boring episode. But I did like like the follow up from last week's with the heart at the end there, especially. I felt like that was still maintained is why I liked it. Like yeah. there was still like that that aura of like hopeless or ho- like hope still being there, but also being kind of hopeless. That's leading into like next week's inevitable hopeful like ending i at least i hope it's gonna <laughs> at least i imagine it's gonna be hopefully ending or hope like hopeful nah it's gonna die. I, don't think, I, I think it's gonna be depressing as fuck yeah i, I, so. I think well, so people are gonna die i think like oh shit well, who, i had someone exactly in my head i think andor is gonna die i think someone <laughs> gonna die Bro, like that would be great and then it's revealed that it's actually like andor in like the in rogue one he's got a double a he has two a's <laughs> <laughs> He's a clone of Andor. Somehow, Cassian mm-hmm. returned. Someone's gonna die next week. I had it it's totally gonna happen for sure. Like no one yeah, likes I... Cyril because I think like yeah, like at this point it's confirmed Cyril has to think, be next season. Cause... I think Cyril's mom is gonna die. <laughs> just, yeah, he comes back. To no, no, I feel like she's like, gonna she's say dead. just to like be a little, just to be an absolute pain. <laughs> Dude, just, if that were my mom, oh, spite, my I actually, she exists. I, I thought Nothing in killer because she lives like, on spite. He gave a look when he when she said something, and I was like, "Oh shit, he's gonna kill her today!" Like that's like <laughs> yeah. the last straw. Like he's going to go into that room and blast her, or something like that. I, I love that he's just like this this shitty kid <laughs> that just yeah. lives with his mom and, and is mean to her, and she's mean to him. Like, like when uh, when the the sergeant dude was like, sorry for disturbing you and your family. <laughs> His mom's just glaring at him, and he's, like, waving her away, like, Mom, get out of here! Don't embarrass me in front of my that's, friends! I, I that's pretty much her. what, like, I got from Cyril this entire time, is he's just, like, a fucking bratty little kid. Oh, yeah, that's. I think that's why I like him, though, because he, he feels like a real person to me. Yeah. Like, he, he feels like someone you'd actually know and maybe not like in real life. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would hate him if I knew him. Yeah, I know people like that. That's the upsetting bit. <laughs> the, the thing about him, right, is that he's super like, pre- like preppy and thinks that like he he thinks like he like he has a higher purpose by like chasing Andor and like that's his calling. He has to get Andor. I'm like, bro, it's just some guy. Man. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like it, that one that one military kid that like sees a sees a military like uh, I don't know recruiter and he's like, oh, I'm gonna fucking join you guys soon. You know, like. You, you, you're favorite... speaking to a future, a few future U.S. soldier. Sorry. My, my favorite <laughs> aspect of like Cyril kind of just comes with a theme that came with like the middle episodes of like the the axe forgets but the tree remembers kind of thing, where like Andor did this thing and didn't even really like think about what it would lead to, and now it's like yeah. a whole thing. I think if they had handled that a little bit better, like, it would be awesome. But are we having just a bunch of people gonna fucking uh, crash this lady's yeah. funeral? Pretty much. <laughs> I think I think that's the wall. In okay. the end, too, if when when uh, Cyril inevitably catches up with Cassian, Cassian's gonna be like like Thanos with with uh, with Wanda. Yes. I don't like, even know. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, <laughs> we meet at last. Really does. Who? <laughs> <laughs> who are you? That actually, like you say that as like kind of like a joke. That is probably gonna happen. Like, yeah. I can Wait actually see that happening in the writing of the show, where it's just Wait like... Wait a minute, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who you are. <laughs> oh, what I'm not shot. really sure where this show's going, though. Well, we have one episode Down the left, fucking right? So right. It's like... Apparently it's just going to be a fucking shootout at a lady's funeral, and that'll uh-huh. be the end. That'll be the end, and that's what we decided to make a show for some reason, I guess. I really yeah. hope, I really hope that someone... This entire up. build up. Comes like to a the gun, gunslinger, right? Just rocks up and he's like, "You just yeet your last hole, bitch!" And he takes off his helmet as a Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, fully. He takes well, off his well, helmet for man. another helmet. <laughs> I appreciate that this episode like confirmed something that I've been wondering about, like the manifesto thing that it was just left in this box on the Amos. So at least that's gonna go somewhere. Because like, if la- sure. if earlier in the season he had gotten this thing and it was like a whole like he wanted you to have this, uh, take it, take it. And then he just lo- loses it in the prison thing. I'd be like, "What the fuck?" So at least he has that. Like, at least that's gonna get to the rebellion probably and be like, "Oh, like this is like our gospel <laughs> or some shit." <laughs> this wow. show is so strange. Like, it's I I think Andor is a 
I, I'm hesitant to call it a bad show, but I think it's a show that doesn't need to exist. That's got some really cool stuff in it. It's just it's like it feels cool bloated, ideas, mm-hmm. but unnecessary. I would genuinely say, and I don't like Book of Boba Fett that much, and that makes me sad. But I would say that I like it more than I like the show. Like, yeah. there you like Book of Boba Fett more than this show. I like Book of Boba Fett more like the show. I- like I don't know, I'm an old. That's a fucking I'm, Bernie hot take right there. I, 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 no, I'm, so I'm the same. To me, man. <laughs> like Book of Boba Fett is like more fun to watch. And at least it wasn't as long as the thing. <laughs> like goddamn. I I mean I I certainly like two episodes of Book of Boba Fett. That's about it. And those I episodes would be the Mandalorian that. episodes. See, nah, like there were definitely some of the Boba Fett episodes that I was like, this is good. So at the end of the day, I I think even even with me absolutely having hated book of boba fett that was still a story that needed to be told whereas andor yeah. is not like andor is in the grand scheme of of star wars a completely useless story that we didn't need i got much more enjoyment out of um out of fucking what was his name uh the one that had boba fett's armor the spinning guy oh, oh Cobb oh. vance yeah Cobb vance yeah I, I had much more enjoyment out of his scenes than any oh, don't! He, uh, why did you say that out loud? Now he's going to get a show. Well, I mean, they're oh. kind of setting that up. It feels like with his end. It feels like it might. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want that. I just think he should show up in other in in other shows. Like I'm fine with that, but don't give him a show. Anytime anyone is like, "Oh man, this is a cool character," and Disney's like, "Fucking make that, make that." They like him. They like him. Make a mm-hmm. <laughs> make the show. Mm-hmm. I was like, "No." Oh, I, people I said that they got like, Agatha. Make that show. Make that show. <laughs> I probably I watch a Cobb Vance show. Nobody ever said that they like Echo, but let's still make that a show. Yeah, really. <laughs> Cobb Vance has just enough like mystique and uh, like disconnectedness In- from the rest of Star Wars. Yeah, like, that I, I think I think I'd enjoy watching a show with him. What they I don't might. want are sh- like if they gave like Mon Mothma a show, I'd be like, oh fuck off. If they made Mo- Mon Mothma a show and it's just her sitting down with bankers for forty episodes, <laughs> it's like that Star Wars <laughs> this version is- of the view. Yeah, this is her show. Like, yeah. like I think actually, I think it's, it's like, a way like to in, make a Mon Mothma show good, though. Like, it, it's just that they're like, not doing it. There, there is a way to make it good, and it's not making it. Ah, mm-hmm. I don't agree. Like in, um, like in in Clone, like you've seen like how like they use Padme in the main st- in the main uh, in the prequels and the Clone Wars. Like she's like just gone on adventures and shit. Like. Yeah, but Mon Mothma clearly I don't like you do that it. shit. You no, know, exactly. That's why she like. I mean, like, I don't I like. Absolutely. It wouldn't make sense for her to do that anyway. I think personally. Well, at least let's have like be like a soldier or something. I don't know. Let's have a shoot someone. Because if they tell another story for the fifth fucking time about how Mon Mothma builds up the the uh, rebellion, I'm gonna fucking shoot myself, dude. You heard it here first, folks. At my end of <laughs> eleven and stream, fucking. We do on. We do on stream. Because, uh, you know, like, I feel like they've done that so many times where it's like, and this is how the rebellion started, and Mon Mothma started, and this is how it starts. I'm like, I, don't, I will agree. I know that how it starts. The problem that I have with this show and a lot of this era is like the storytelling just is like, we keep seeing like the beginning of the rebellion every fucking new thing. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> what is this then? Like, what are we doing? Who cares anymore? <laughs> it feels like none of these are actually the real thing. So, what the hell are we doing? What's up, Ron? <laughs> 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 yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, Half Doomed and uh, Grey Ghoul, thank you for stopping by. What up? Come on in. Who's Ron? So, do any of you actually care about what happens in the next episode? <laughs> no. Nah. Like, does anyone have any, like, real investment in this show? No. I haven't, like, cared a lot of this show, but I, like, like Star Wars enough to be like, okay. But, yeah. Yeah, time, I, I like, think that's yeah. Like for me, I if this story were not in Star Wars, I think I'd hate this show. Yeah, like I the only thing I like about it, the only saving grace is that there's some cool Star Wars world building stuff. But if this show took place in any other type of like uh, setting, I, I would not watch it. I can see mm-hmm. like I, I I'm. The thing is, I'm seeing Star Wars start to become something that people hate, and I, I don't like that. You know, like, it's, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a hot take here. I know we talk about it all the time, 
but this is slowly but surely becoming a Marvel type enterprise. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. And yep. for a franchise like Star Wars, it doesn't work. No. I love. I've loved most of, if not, I've loved to an extent everything they brought out thus far. I will not diss that. But we're now at a stage where I'm exhausted from Marvel, right? Mm-hmm. I should have enjoyed Black Panther 2, and I'm on the fence. I, uh, you know, I, I've gone You're going to see it tomorrow, so uh, oh, I'll, I'll, give my, okay. I'll give my two I've, cents on that. I, I've now gone to a stage where Star Wars is a massive part of my life, massive part of my childhood. Uh, massive enough that I've even got it tattooed on me. So and Me too, man. Yeah, so it, it mm-hmm. means a lot to me, but I'm also in that sort of fragile state now where there's only so much more of this kind of content that I'm willing to accept, if you know what I mean, because yeah. I was For sure. disappointed That's why like... with the movies. Uh, Rogue One was the best movie to come out, uh, and it wasn't even, technically speaking, part of... You like the main three like trilogies. It was its own thing, but it it told a better story than the most recent three, which is sad. The shows Mandalorian has been superb. I, I obviously people will differ. I, I get that. I, I, I enjoyed Book of Boba Fett. Season three is premiering in February. Is it February or so? March? Yeah. The, like the thing is, I I'm, can't wait for that. I'm kind of excited for the hi- when they start like making more High Republic stuff because. Yeah. That's like a yeah, whole. That's, that's what I want. Yeah. That's untapped potential there. Like the you know? acolyte is yeah. a show that I'm genuinely like, come on, let's get to that. Like please. that could yeah. be something fucking hell yeah, you know? Like we don't any or with acolyte, man. That we I don't have any for reference for what it should be, what it needs to be. So it's like a fresh start for us, you know? Yeah, I, that's yeah. what we need. I, I don't like this interconnected crap. Like it's always annoying yeah. like that. Exactly. Yes. Worst. Everything is connected. And I swear I, to God, if they're like the fatigue's a real problem. If they, they they might they might very well do like a fucking Yoda show though. With that. Yeah, but I haven't got a problem with that. I guess no, it's like I, Yoda, Yoda four hundred years like... ago. I guess it, it'll make sense. I mean, he'll show up in Ohio Republic thing for sure. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I have no doubt about that. I don't uh, think I would like... make a main character though. That would be like nah. Yeah, he, he would uh, be a a part of the story, but not a main part of the story. I hope like that's the best I could hope for. Honestly. In the yeah, books I, of I, the High Republic, they've already been kind of doing that a little bit. Like he doesn't show up a whole lot, even in like the first arc of the books. I think he, they they referenced that he was on sabbatical, which is a, what's a weird word to use. <laughs> <laughs> it's on sabbatical and je- the the, the Star Wars the book, sabbatical. Like double take. I was like, is that like appropriate? <laughs> It just doesn't sound like a Star Wars word. He's just going off and, and, and traveling around the universe. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I'm <clears throat> I'm with Dan on like the, the fatigue and how it's I, part of me wonders if it's just that I'm getting old and grumpy, which is undoubtedly true. But I, I also I, I, like I know that bracket. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like it's it really sucks when something that I, I love so much, which is for me, my whole life has been Star Wars and comic books. And now I'm just sick of them. Yeah, and I've I've gotten to the point where like I, I I ride a motorcycle, right? My motorcycle has a giant mythosaur skull, like a, a massive decal on the tank. And I've gotten to where when people see it, I don't even want to talk to them about it. Like if they recognize it, they're like, "Oh, that's the thing from the Mandalorian." I'm like, "Shut up." <laughs> go, For those wondering, go it's a away. Bike, by the way, it's a, it's Thanks. a lovely bike. Uh, but I, I get what you're saying. Like I feel for my dad, right? Because my dad. My dad was very young when he had me, so my dad's only 40. Uh, so he and I, like, I kind of grown up with him. So he and I have watched all of this as it's happened, as it's come out. And it's kind of sad to see that all of his love for it has kind of, unfortunately, slowly started to go. It gets stamped and out. It's, and it's sad because if it wasn't for my dad, I probably wouldn't be as into Star Wars as I am. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the hardest part for me is that it, it doesn't feel like... Um... Like my love for this is disappearing. It feels like uh, if Star Wars was a campfire, Disney is just just stomping on it, just, just pouring stomping water on it. it, and just yeah, they're killing it. Well, see, and you know, it, it, that's what hurts about. I think what a, a better metaphor would almost be is that if it's a fire, it's a fire that they're like stoking too much. And oh yeah, like yeah, they're pouring gasoline like, oh, on it. Jesus, buddy, like it's yeah, you're it, you're burning it, me now. I gotta move my seat back a little bit. Sorry, and eventually you move your seat back so far that you're not around your people anymore. You know. The the one saving yeah. grace that all this new Star Wars stuff has that I that I'm I'm at least happy about is that I I feel like um, Marvel has has fallen victim to this big time. Um, I don't feel like Star Wars has tried to like preach to me yet. 
Like, I don't feel like there's ever been some sort of shoehorn political ideology to discuss in a Star Wars episode yeah. so far that Marvel has absolutely fallen victim to. Uh, and that's good. But Ye- the Geeks moment that I would disagree, really, <laughs> dude, the, the moment that I, I start to feel like like Disney is trying to push some sort of agenda, agenda on me through Star Wars, I'm done. I'm absolutely checked out. I think the. I mean, like, for like, I think it doesn't help like how like Star Wars is for me, at least it feels very political. It, it felt like um, it, they almost did that with Ray, though. So I he don't has... like I can't I can't see how, but like I've like so like I mean like I find that like it's very much like like the like like um I don't know what like the ideologies are but like because because like, I, I hate not... this word as much as I hate this word Ray very much is a Mary Sue like she is the most oh absolutely like she can do everything I'm, in the fucking I'm, universe you know when we we discussed this or you guys were discussing it last week I didn't I don't I don't at least in like the the like in seven I don't see her being a Mary Sue. But but like, I feel like she became more Mary it, Sue-esque yeah, like, later it, it on, happens, but like in the first but like, thing, mm-hmm. it was okay. In the first but like, it's what it is. Like, in, with um, the po- politicism of Star Wars, I think it's so intrinsic, intrinsically built from, that's built into the foundations of Star Wars with like the Empire and the Rebels and like what like the Empire stands for and like what the Rebels stands for. I feel like that, like that's why like, I don't think it feels like an agenda's being pushed on because it was always there from the get go. Well, that's because oh, yeah. like in Star Wars, it's handled pr- more appropriately than just preaching it to you, though. Like, I think it's yeah, it's like because it, 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 it's, it's it, like as I said, built from the fact like it is literally the crux of the universe. Like, this is why right. well, these like, two factions are like. There's no thematically, Star Wars has has you know political stuff in it, but it's political in universe. Yeah, it's there, it's yeah. not like, like it doesn't. A term that I hate is like updated for a modern audience. Like th- that is mm. what I'm I'm referring to specifically. Where like they're not trying to force topical political issues of today into star wars yeah like there's no scene like in mm. black adam where like a kid is like at the very beginning of the movie straight up says to the camera pretty much you're just here to take over my country and oppress our people and i will not stand for it and like at the uh. mo- like in the most he like literally has like a little monologue for like five minutes to this officer. Is, is that what happens in the fucking movie yes like Straight up at the very beginning of the movie, there's a character that says oh. that. Not the Kenny of the movie, actually. He's the kid that hangs around for the whole movie, and I fucking hate him. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, I fully expect at some point to see somewhere in like the MCU, like like uh, Thor changing his cape to be like the Ukraine flag or something. Like it's it's just a matter of time before Marvel just goes all in on that stuff. See, I don't. I mean, like not. Uh, you mean like in like a promo thing, right? Like not in a movie. Probably even in a movie I at this think, point. See, I don't think nothing like that would happen because, like, that would just be. Woo. To be honest, though, you got to remember as well, uh, and I exactly agree with what you said, Kaz, with Star Wars. Obviously, Star Wars is literally like you say; it's built on good versus evil in any sense, right? It is mm. fully that is that is the moral of the story. Doesn't matter what side you're on, someone is always evil. End of. And then the political side of it comes into it as well. And I agree with you, Richard. Marvel are very, they're very blasé about the situation because they, they just do alone. it. They just do it, and then they worry about the ramifications after, rather than mm-hmm. actually thinking about it logically. But that's them. They're also in a position of power where, if they don't do something, they're just going to get hazed. So it's it's a poison chalice because they are of such a high stature that they kind of have to, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I've had this uh, this kind of not I wouldn't say a debate, but Till and I disagree on this. Where Till Till thinks that um, Marvel has always been political, and he's right; they have, uh, even like in the comics, like that's yeah. literally the whole X Men was X Men was yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But the flip side is that I would argue that Marvel has always included um, political topics as like a sideline, but the the primary story is usually not something that can be tied into modern day political events with the one exception being probably the X-Men typically, you know, you're not, it's not going to be a political story as much as it is like, there's little notes of what the writers, you know, their personal beliefs and that's just, you know, humanity coming through. But, um, I I think Marvel has gotten to a point now where it's just like, I I can't watch an episode without feeling like somebody's like standing on a podium and yelling what they believe into my ears. And I'm just thankful that I don't get that feeling from Star Wars yet. Well, like, because, like, the thing is with, with like, people, like, the 
things in such power as like no matter what you do like you, if you do add it you're gonna have people that are gonna hate it if you don't add it you're gonna have like the sjws that are gonna hate it because you didn't add it you know yeah that's why i, I, I think it's a poison it, it's a it, yeah it's a like a double-ended saber here like it's a yeah, vicious it's, circle even if it's like a a concept or like an ideology that like i i believe in i don't want it in my show that's not why i'm watching this mm-hmm. yeah yeah, in a sense, you're watching these fantasy things to escape the, the grim realities of our That's exactly world. why I'm watching them, man. I'm watching, <laughs> I'm watching this stuff because I want to see superheroes beat each other up. I don't want to be thinking yeah. about politics when I'm watching She-Hulk, you know? Like, that's not what I'm here for. Well, it's, you could argue the same. I mean, uh, the, the, the entire driving force of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I loved it but for different reasons, but the entire crux of it is, politically, no one agreed. No one agreed with anyone. And it caused this massive conflict and terror. And it was like, this right. could have just been resolved if everyone just spoke. Now that I know <laughs> a little bit more about like the original concept for that show that, that Sam mentioned on an earlier podcast, I I desperately want to see like what that show would have been had it not been altered. Sorry, which show? Uh, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. What was the original concept? I don't even remember what the original concept was. What, what did I say? You- <laughs> I can't recall it entirely, but there was maybe it was you, maybe it wasn't you. Um, it was me. The, Might have been Till. Might the, have been Till that said that. It, actually, I think it was Till. Yeah, but like the the entire arc was supposed to be different with like the um the super soldier serums and like the uh the the flag smashers or whatever they were called were supposed to be completely different. But there was something that happened at the time that like I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but something relevant to like modern day politics resulted in them changing the writing for that show. Uh, was that in the height of uh, the BLM movement? I don't know. It it could have been a pandemic thing. I have no idea. But something forced them to change the entire show's structure and writing. Uh, and that's why the show feels so weird. Is because it, it basically got neutered in post. I feel like that show but, so far has been like the most average. Because I don't really like hate it. I don't love it. Like it's kind of just not. Eh. It's just happened. Definitely the biggest like dropped ball. I think because like the buddy cop formula is is timeless and it works so well. And they didn't really take advantage of it except for like a couple of moments. Yeah. Uh yeah like uh about what we were talking about a little bit earlier with like the Marvel and Star Wars thing. Like I think the big problem that Disney has is they just treat these properties too similarly. Like. I think with Marvel, and, and yeah, we're still getting like that superhero fatigue for sure. But I think that mm-hmm. the format makes a little bit more sense with Marvel because of its origins already being comic books and stuff like that. Where it's like, oh, this mm-hmm. character's getting like their story. Like this is oh, this thing. Don't get this me thing. wrong. Don't get me wrong. I, I I fully agree with you. And the thing is, Disney Plus is a good venture for that yeah, for and, Marvel. And yeah, you know what they, I mean. But the, so the fact is, when they try to do the same thing with Star Wars, it's just like this character doesn't need. A show. Like, no. The fact that yeah. there, the fact that there's an Andor show and then there's rumors of like a Bix Colleen show make oh, me gosh. like go, what the fuck are you thinking? Now, making an Ahsoka show live action, I I'm on board with that. Despite what people was, I, I I think that that is a good idea. I love Ahsoka. I think the character of Ahsoka is a beautiful, beautiful character, and it's well written in every aspect. And I think. Yeah, why not bring it to the big screen? I have no. I'd be more that. into it though if, if if we knew that it wasn't ultimately just building towards this Thrawn event. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if they if they kept that hush and then in the show it was like this is where we're at, and it'd be like, okay, this is this is cool, right? I, I, I'm on board with this. I get what you're saying. But it might but not even, like, right, it might not even be dealt with in the Ahsoka show. Like the rumor is, yeah, that all these like the Mandalorian, the Book of Boba Fett, the Ahsoka, uh, there's probably another like Rangers in New Republic, if that's even happening. <laughs> like like all these shows are gonna go towards the Thrawn show, and that's to me so goddamn Marvel that it makes me go like But like wasn't Thrawn like during Vader and stuff? Like yeah. uh, Thrawn was taken away in uh, Rebels by Ezra in with space whales. Yeah, they kind of just go into space. Yeah, the yeah so space. we don't really know where they are, and so yeah. Oh, like oh, I guess we some way to bring back thing. Yeah, they're they're definitely like because in Mando ever, season two, like they bring up Thrawn, right? Like it's happening. Yeah, ever yeah. since like uh, Ezra kidnapped Thrawn with space whales, the like, everyone's been wondering when they're gonna come back. Like when is this storyline picked up? And Ahsoka apparently is where we're gonna probably see it. But well, they already cast. Uh, Ezra, didn't they? Yeah, so. they cast Ezra and Thrawn. 
I mean, so is yeah, the Ezra so confirmed, confirmed or is that just rumored to be the election? No, that's, that's confirmed. That's confirmed? Awesome. Almost confirmed, yeah. So, yeah, so Ezra and Thrawn will be coming back this... Which, I think what'll happen is we'll probably get Ezra and then like and Thrawn will be like there together yet, but like then Thrawn will go off and do his whole like see you in my goddamn ultimate show thing. Like fuck <laughs> me. Well, look, so, I, I haven't got an issue with the Thrawn story because Thrawn is a character that should be explored more on screen. No, I agree. It's just how yeah. they're doing it. Uh, yeah, I, I would. How you? It's the end result that isn't the problem. It's the the, the journey, if you will. I, I agree with you on that. See, I think my biggest issue is that like, they see that like people aren't liking these shows and that they're like sort of just burning down favorite franchises and Disney isn't really doing anything about it. Yeah. They're 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 like they're just like, yeah, we'll just release the next one. They'll, they, they'll like this one. You know, like they're like, oh this one will give us a good couple million dollars. People are gonna hate it, but that's, you know, it'll still it make us money. Me. It's just money. Like um, going back to the uh, There's no Falcon passion in it. thing. Just real quick, I looked it up. Um Apparently, the original plot, there's rumors anyway, was that the Flag Smashers were supposed to be a terroristic organization that was actively spreading a viral pandemic. Oh, yeah. Okay, that. Okay, the, I remember, okay, I remember okay, still I saying that, yeah. So that's, that's a rumor, and apparently the director debunked it, but, you know, they probably have to debunk that, uh, whether no, it's true or not. They honestly, have to say it's not true. I feel like I liked the idea of where, because, like, the, the Flag Smashers being, like, good ish was a good idea but like it just was mishandled like yeah i just feel like they fumbled that whole storyline at the end i i really feel like ever since season one of the mandalorian everything disney touches they ruin towards the end yeah i would agree i feel like everything it feels good and then the ends happen i'm like oh yeah like i'd say Except that for about kenobi the... that's the opposite from that's me. true that's the opposite uh, <laughs> but even that like man yeah like yeah. that uh. Kenobi was just I didn't like Kenobi. I didn't I didn't dislike it. It just kind of felt like whatever. Uh the fan cut I liked better than the actual like premiere. But yeah. I, it even was even the, the new Star Wars movies, like it just feels like everything Disney touches turns to shit in the end. Yeah. They're, they're, they, they, like I was saying, there's no passion in it anymore. None. None. I can feel just... I felt passion with like the Mandalorian. You know, you yeah. can tell people yeah. loved this. Um, and I, I think I felt a little bit of it with Rogue One, and I think even a little bit I feel it with Andor. Uh, there's like there's little bits in there, like the, all the little bits of like world building. That's yeah. stuff they don't have to do. So someone in there cares, but and in, in the end, you can. I, I just can't get past this this feeling that everything that Disney's put out from the Marvel stuff to the Star Wars stuff is just this. It's a bunch of suits in a room saying we got to put out this story to make money. So Yo, even you're something like, AJ, like the Santa right. Clauses is, is like is like that for me. Where like I'm like, yeah, <laughs> cool, but fuck, there's definitely some creepy business minds behind this. Going like, oh, we know <laughs> that people are gonna fucking. All watch people want to see this. Tim Allen again, a Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, yeah, we yeah. do, but uh. <laughs> like, uh, Sam was asking me before, um, before we started, like when I was gonna go see uh, Black Panther. And like I want to, I want to go see Black Adam too, which is just weird that those two titles are so similar. But um, I want to go see Black Panther. I want to go see Black Adam. But I just, I don't know if I can make myself go to a theater and sit through something that I think I'm gonna dislike. Yeah, like I so, during this, I just bought tickets for uh, Black Panther just as we we're talking, like through this hour, and I, like because I didn't buy them before, like before on any Marvel stuff, I'll, I'll like buy them early. But now I'm just like I. I could wait, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've had to like kind of take steps in my personal life to sort of disconnect from some of the, the media and the buzz around these movies, because like, it's basically that's, that's how journalism works now is you either love it and everyone who doesn't love it is a troll or you hate it. And everyone who loves it is an idiot. Everyone who hates Black yeah, Panther is racist. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Right? Like there's no in between. <laughs> like, God, can I, can Sorry, it just be a movie, please? <laughs> I, I like I said to Sam though, like with the whole Black Panther situation, it sucks because if you looked at me, you'd just think I oh, just a white guy. But I have Afro Caribbean heritage, so to to me, like it, it's a personal thing. Like the first Black Panther film, I can admit the story was wasn't great, but it meant more to me because of the culture and the people I grew up with than the story. Whereas this one just felt like the novelty wore off. And that's where I was like, okay, well, I, I, I'm done, sort of thing. Like, I, I'm checked out. Like, this is, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> no, no spoilers for Wakanda Forever. 
But I will say the only thing that I'll agree with you, Dan, is that I think like certain things, especially like the the ass end of the movie, is just weird. Yes. Like it's yes. just weird. Mm-hmm. My problems usually come from pacing. I think that's a huge thing I find in a movie where it's just like I also learned that that movie is like two hours and like it, maybe three hours long. It's, 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 it's long. Like I and honestly, I didn't feel that. But like at the end, that's because it fucking goes. You're like what? Yeah. The yeah, the, yeah, I don't know, man. It's I I get what everyone is saying though. Like I agree. Was it you, AJ, that said about the whole like if you don't like it, you're a, you're a schmuck. If you do like yeah. it, you're a schmuck. Yeah, well, that, that was just, that's like what the media is saying. Like if you don't like this movie, you're racist. You know, like well, this is this is the thing, right? The whole point of these media, same with music, is it's subjective, correct? Yeah, am exactly. I, am I correct? Okay, cool. I'm not. I'm not calling you a racist, Dan. Like your opinion oh, no, is your opinion. Right, and the thing <laughs> is, like, if if someone was to say I don't like it because it's an all black cast, yeah, that shit's wrong. Like that's racist. That is where mm-hmm. I draw a line. If you don't like it because it's poorly written, yeah, fair. I respect that. That's a valid opinion. Yeah, yeah if you if you hate it because <laughs> of the cast, why the fuck are you going to go see Black Panther? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah it's the wrong it's... movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's what makes me like just irks me because. Like, even with these projects, right, I have never had an issue, like, the whole Moses Ingram situation was fucked, because mm. she is, she was, she brought raw energy to the role, but it was a poorly written role, mm-hmm. so it was wasted talent. It's nothing to do with the actor, it's down to the people who create said roles. As an actor, I have acting background, I have music background. If I'm given something to work with, that's what I work with, right? That, that's what I have to do. I can give what I can give, but ultimately it's the director's and writer's choice. If they make the poor decision, the actor's in a fuck situation. They're there for the paycheck at the end of it. Like, they can't do anything about it. It's It just baffles me. It really yeah, does. It's, it's, like, hilarious watching, like, not to talk, talk about another show for a second, but, like, House of the Dragon, like, watching interviews with the cast about, like, their characters and, like, really, like, gauging, like, that they don't think about... the the things that we do at all. You know what I mean? Like, it's right. just to them mm. a job, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And we, like, put so much stake into it, but at the end of the day, like, yeah. Ultimately, that's the thing, right? That That's what a lot of people don't quite grasp the concept and across the ball, right? Like you say, they don't give a shit. They, they get their money at the end of it, and they get, like, mm. percentages of things. That's how it works for them. It's, how can we boost my career? I'm not in it. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm given a script to read and I've got to do voice work or something, I just do the voice work. I don't necessarily care much about what's going on. I'm just reading what I've been told to read. Uh, if I enjoy it, then yeah, I might inquire about it. But you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. what you're doing. That's that's the job, and it is a job. It's us who take it and digest it. That's the only difference. Right. I, I talked about this a little bit with She-Hulk, but it's I, I've heard of it referred to as fan baiting, and it's it's an intentional form of marketing. Yeah where you just try to split people up into groups and piss them off. And this yeah. it creates buzz. It works. So, I mean, we saw it with She-Hulk. Whether you like She-Hulk or not, it's there was a lot was of clever. buzz around She-Hulk. It was in, and, they did it in a clever way. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it, it just, they, they know exactly what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but tying this back into Andor... Um, I can't tie it back into Andor. I'm so tired of Andor. <laughs> I liked the guy that was. I liked the actor for Cassian's friend that had to bounce off of B two emo. The emo this episode. He's nice. Yeah, that's what he's I'll fun. Say. He's a fun guy. He's a fungus, <laughs> and I feel bad for him. Like that could have been the show for me. A little, a little fifteen minutes short of this guy's life. It, it Andor feels like it should have been a movie. It all, really all of does. these things, yeah, they all yeah. feel like they need to be movies. Of all the like, ones to be movies, I would be like Cassie and Andor. Apparently, was the movie one. Like, fuck, mm-hmm. it's annoying I, as hell. Yeah, it's it's very frustrating. I mean, hell, even as a movie, it wouldn't have worked though, because like the structure of this show is just strange. Like, it, we have it, it feels like there's like one too many acts in this. That there's like a whole arc that doesn't need to be yeah. there. Wow, it's almost as if this show should have just been fucking nine episodes or goddamn eight episodes. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I kind of feel like uh, the show should have started uh, after the heist. Like we didn't need to see the heist. They, that doesn't need to be part of the show. Or um, maybe, maybe not quite off. Maybe like the arse end of the heist. Yeah. You know where it starts to go wrong. 
that's where I think it should have started. Yeah, I'd even say that like Andor didn't even need to be part of the heist. He could have been pulled in. Like we could have seen Andor become part of the show, starting with the prison stuff. Um, I, I don't think that the heist. I just I feel like Andor is involved with everything, and it, he doesn't really need to be. Like the uh, heist is is obviously important to the plot with Mothma, which, uh, but like barely. We could have had had the heist be a thing, uh, and then the show we like we see that like let's say the show begins with like the heist ending, and we see that they succeed. And we see Andor in prison. That's where the show starts for Andor. Like everything in between the heist and Andor breaking out of prison is just doesn't need to be there. It's irrelevant. It's all useless. Yeah. He goes to I the end for like five minutes and then gets captured. Like that's really what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel that there's like this there's a sense of the Disney obviously clearly understood that there was a bit of a do we really want this uh with Andor? So they've, I don't know, they've kind of gone full reversal on, well, let's just oversaturate everyone with this character, so hopefully they'll love him, which has just done the opposite. It's like, well, we're sick of him. We don't want him on the screen. We want like these other characters in the show that are much cooler and have much better story to tell. Like, give us some of that, not saturate us with this. Because, like you say, a lot of it could have just been cut out because it isn't really relevant. It's just there for the sake of it. And it's like, it could be avoided, and it could be a bit better flowing. If they did that, but I don't know, man. But unfortunately, they deemed it th- that this show was the big one. You know, like <laughs> so weird. The next episode is the last episode, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Big Finally. finale next week. Finally, <laughs> finally. What do we watch after that? What do we do? Yeah, well, actually, we're we're That's something else to hate. Like, we're on a little bit of a break after that. Uh, we're gonna try to talk about Wakanda forever. I guess it'll probably just be me, Dan, and uh, and AJ talking about that, but. Get a little, uh, get a little holiday break in here. Yeah, and then I think the next show that we wanted to talk about, I think we all agreed that we want to talk about The Last of Us. So, yeah. oh right, when is it coming? Jan- Jan- to watch that because I don't have January January that Jan- one. I am actually excited for that one. Looks pretty good. That was, that was great. That. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be awesome. But uh, well, oh, should I had a question because about next week, pretty much. Like, cause who? Like, I, I think we glossed over this. Who do you guys think is going to die next week? Andor. <laughs> I'm on Mothma. I think Luthen. <laughs> so you Sagarera. think Luthen's out next week? I... No, he's, he's staying till the end. He's staying till episode 9. What? Huh? Uh, okay. Well, you asked if Luthen's staying alive. That's my, that's my, that's my guess. Episode 9? What are you talking about? I, 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 episode I, 9 I, of Star Wars? I got a feeling it'll be oh, Luthen okay, okay. or um, that's like, someone ca- else quite close to the, the cause. <laughs> oh, what, was the, what was the first guess there, Dan? I, you know, I, I think it might be Luthen or someone else that's like part of the main cause of the rebellion. I think Luthen's assistant is going to die. I, hope so. I think Mon Mothma's husband. Possibly, maybe, yeah. Maybe, actually. <laughs> Zero. Uh, I think uh, yeah, fucking I'm Cyril's honest. mom. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a hope. That's not a possibility. Yeah, we could get a scene where it just cuts to her in her bed and she's died of, of like a heart attack from seeing her vault like being sold from. Okay, okay, yeah. I don't think uh, a single death. I think we'll, the the series is just going to fizzle out. Very possibly, might not, and may one might not die. I, I think like like cause did they is Vel going to Ferrix, the cousin of Mom Mothma, that chick? Oh fucking no! Oh, if she's yeah. gonna die. If she's going there, <laughs> yeah, I think she's I, gonna die. I oh, I think I think her and uh, what's her like her girlfriend are gonna die together. Together? Mm, I think that's that's too meh. I on think the one of them will die. It'll be it'll be even. I, I do think that if if we're gonna see any deaths in this this show this season or next season, I think it's gonna be Mothma's whole family. Whole oh, 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 f- even the daughter. All of if them. If they did that, that'd be ballsy. I would actually be like, yeah, I'm in. Let's kill a child, guys. <laughs> I mean, pull me into Star Wars a little bit. I'd be like, okay, on brand okay. for Star Wars. Not that Mothma's like a kids. big kid. <laughs> it's kind of on brand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not that Mothma's like a big character in any of the movies, but like, no one has ever talked about Mothma's family, and I just don't think that she could run the Rebel Alliance with the her banker. shitty husband. No, I, I do no feel. Way. I do feel that maybe that banker that she's trying to do deal with. I think that will go south, which is what will cause mm-hmm. her to go full head over heels for the rebellion. Yep, I'm with you on that. I think that Mothma's going to lose her family, and that's going to be like the spark that ignites the the, the rebellion. The, the rebel in the next episode, though, yep. you 
Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think so. On the next okay. episode or beginning of the second season, yep. I think that's where we'll really see Mothma drop to the level of Luthor. I think, I think that's his the mom is going to die. Oh, AJ, I swear <laughs> fucking God. My, my, honestly, not, my hope for room. Luthen comes to the fact that I want him to come to a head with Mon Mothma in the next season and have them be, like, kind of, like, rival leaders and, and inevitably she overtakes him. Like, kind I of, like, think the, the bumbling sergeant idiot is going to die because he's going to come in to help uh, Cyril and he's going to get shot in a dumb way. Well, if he shows up, he's probably going to die. I will <laughs> Uh, shit, yeah, because I think Vel's definitely gonna die if she shows up, and... I don't even know who that is. Vel is, uh, is I think they're just gonna... They're oh, just gotcha. gonna nuke the entire planet from orbit. They might do some sort of mining disaster kind of thing, yeah, they might pull that shit. Which, again, not to bring up another plot thread entirely here, but, like, the whole opening of this show talking about, like... What was his fucking home planet? Sorry again. Oh fucking who no. knows! But it was, yeah. it was it had, there was a mining accident. whatever the fuck. There yeah. was a mining accident there, and it gets this like kind of like really mysterious thing, like oh, what is this? And it feels like it's gonna be like talked about later, but yeah, it, no. it, they kind of make it sound like no one's <laughs> supposed to have like lived on that planet. The mystery is no one gives a shit about it. No one no, cares. Like, fuck, like the sister thing. It's gonna keep coming back to me, but it just pisses me off, man. His sister like, might it's... be alive, but we'll never know or care. Oh, it's just <laughs> like, oh, it's so <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Also, okay, big thing for me at the very end when him and Melchi are like hanging out on the beach. I just guess this is a little, a little bit of a lore thing for me because, like, I get, oh, let's split up. It'll be better. But why not just keep them together? Because if at the end of the season Andor joins the rebellion, they both end up joining the rebellion mm. anyway. Like, just. I just think he could have had another person coming to Ferrix. Whoa. And... Whoa, buddy. Stop stop thinking with your brain. Start thinking with your wallet, okay? We got a show to write here. We got a Melchie yeah, spinoff was... to make where yeah, he goes and spreads the word. Make a of that guy. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, Because I'm just like, that's like a little thing where I was like, nah, that's a little dumb. The spinoff is going to be like a like a 30-minute short of him just dying. <laughs> yeah, like over and over again. Andor's been so inconsistent with the writing where like there's there's times where I feel like the writing is like mwah, like chef's kiss beautiful and there's other times where it's like this is this just feels like you guys just smash it together real quick you don't really it at the end of the day like there's it's it's like I said earlier Andor is a a mediocre show that has sprinkles of really cool stuff in it yeah but it it'll never reach the high of I can't swim like that to me yeah, was actually the highlight of this entire show so far. Even yeah, better than yeah, the no, eye, yeah. I'd say. Like, the eye was visually cool. Don't give a fuck about it, because it didn't but really like, like, yeah. make me feel something that that, that character made me feel. I yeah. think, guys, I think that the five of us should just band together and we should just write a fucking Star Wars show. I'll fly out to... I'm flying to America next year, so I'll just take it with me as, like, a manuscript, give it to them, and be like, if you don't make the show... I'm gonna hunt you down, but you know what? And, we can do yeah. it. And with that, what you what Dan has done there is segued nicely into uh, this new Star Wars campaign. I'm going to be streaming on Quinky Squadron with our oh. cast here. We're going to be run. Nice. We're going to be doing a test pilot of this. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. My my entire body would stop getting out of bed if I had another project. <laughs> It would just refuse. It it just it it got it go on strike. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to predict next week because to me it's so it's so basic in a sense because mm-hmm. it's just like well they're gonna go to Ferrix and fight. Like, yeah. what, what else it. is gonna happen next week? Like maybe Nothing. maybe Mon Mothma shows up. And, or I guess actually Luthen will be like, "Yo, I'm here. Let's actually get you in the fucking rebellion and not do what I did last time where I just threw you into kind of a random mission first to kind of test the water. <laughs> like that kind of didn't make sense in hindsight." They're gonna, it's going to be a big fight that's going to start in space and then go down to the ground. Then Luthen's going to get off of his spaceship and he's going to pull out his little like handle thing that we keep seeing. And it's going to go and a lightsaber's going to ignite. And then the X-Men theme's going to play. It's going to go and then the X-Men show up on a Quinjet. And then Boba Fett shows up on a Rancor and they have a big fight between uh, Luthen, the X-Men, and Boba Fett. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, Black Panther's there. He's there now and he's, he's doing stuff. Wakanda forever, <laughs> and then, and then fade to black. Uh, Thanos will return. Oh, oh man! 
You can't make this shit up, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between. I, I like just did. Just, and I would say after, it's like, get us in the writer's room. Let's all make a show together. Yeah, post credit <laughs> scene will be like Superman's chest, and the camera will pan up, and it'll be Ben Affleck as Superman. <laughs> Bam! And Henry Cavill as Batman. Henry Cavill as Batman, as Geralt of Rivia. <laughs> Again. Geralt of Rivia's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> None of this matters. I'm sick of this stuff. <laughs> All right, guys. That's Any enough for me. I have nothing thoughts? else on Andor. <laughs> okay. Nothing else on this episode of Andor, just as it should be. As um, all things should be. All right, let's raid into Owl Bear in there playing some a D and D today. Owl Bear. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Yeah, but next week, uh, I am excited <laughs> to wrap. Yeah, like, well, you just got me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're in. <laughs> uh, next week, we are going to, unfortunately, we're going to have to move the time of the show. I think we're going to try to do it at on Friday instead. Uh, there will be yeah. no Roro next week. Sam got a fucking job. I know. Oof, it's unfortunate. Also, it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, oh, yeah. Also, it's also yeah. Thanksgiving. I know the like thing that happened. My boy, Richard... <laughs> And Sorry, I live Asian. in America. Shit, and my boy Sam and Dan. Oh. Well, uh, you say for, no. well, I was giving thanks for like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the, for, the, for the Americans that watch this, uh, happy Thanksgiving for next week. Uh, obviously, I'm English, so unfortunately I don't celebrate it, but I hope everyone has a happy Thanksgiving or whatever you're meant to I say. I think it'd be awkward if we did start celebrating it to be a. You know what? Fuck it, Kaz. I'm going to come to Birmingham. <laughs> I'm happy goodbye, I call it. Yeah, fuck it. You have it back. I don't want it. <laughs> when I see something I like. <laughs> what? Alright, take us out of here. <laughs> what did I just miss? <laughs> Look, come, come, come into. Come into come. Alright, what did I say? Are you ready? Tell me when you're ready. What are you talking about? Tell me when you're... Where am I going? No, 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 look at my camera. I'm looking at your camera. I'm looking at your camera. I'm looking at your camera. Alright. When I see something I like... (laughs) 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 Oh my god. What a monster. (laughs) Hold up. Yeah, thank also, you so we much for Tokyo Tuesday. Maybe this is too much. Oh, oh, oh! Throw on top of Sam's tomorrow. It's gonna be cool. <laughs> I'm gonna tomorrow. give Take Sam so much trauma. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Oh, Muck Flunky, everybody. Muck Flunky. Thank you for watching. Oh god. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that joke. <laughs> I am, a, I am a comical genius, is what I am. Beautiful. I just, Goodness. I just like, I just hear, I hear you chuckle. I'm like, the fuck's going? On? I come back and I just see you playing around with the lips, the chapstick as a fucking periscope. Mm. <laughs> 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 then you're like, guys, guys, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> when I see something I like, because <laughs> otherwise you're giving me permission to create oh, a character. Oh my god, people. Yeah. Uh,